Well, good day. Uh, well, time we get back, we're going to just try to get this whole ONC GM engine finished today. So it's ready to get back in the boat. I decided to put the old manifold on here. And I'll show you the big reason why I decided to put the manifold on here. I'll, go tr I'll try to get a shot here. That particular bolt right there. I'll see if I can get a good close shot. It's so hard to get on that it took me almost an hour alone just to put that item on. I had to make a special wrench in order to do the job. So I had an old 916 wrench here. As you can see, I had to grind it into a shape so that I could, as you can see, it barely fits in there. So I didn't bother filming this because it was just too long. I just thought I'd tell you about it. And I found the old carburetor sitting in the back, so I just got it resting here. It's not on. Same with the old valve cover gasket here. I just put it on. It's just sitting on there because I had to hunt for the bolts. So it's not bolted on. It's just resting on there. So I decided, well, once it's this stage, let's look at what else is left to do. First of all, we're going to deal with the, the old alternator and clean it up. You can see a little bit dirty, but not bad. And on the other side, I want to clean all these. The old contacts here. And I got a little job here. My bracket was broken here. So I had to weld it up here and then make sure that it slides back and forth in that for your belt adjustment. Now we come to the starter. I decided I'm going to take the starter apart and check it out. And boy, am I ever glad I did. I'm going to give you a story as good as, as good as good as I can here. If you one looks at it, yeah, a lot of rust in there, clean. So we're going to take this apart. As you can see, I already got most of it apart. If you look at the old winding here, yeah especially this end. All the rust building up in there from moisture getting in there. The end plate. Uh, look at the rust on there. So We're going to clean all that up, lubricate these bearings, and put, put this all together. The solenoid, you can see rust starting to develop in there. So the starter still works, it's just that it needs a good cleaning. And that's what we're going to, in the process of doing, cleaning this all up, putting it together so we can put it on the old engine. So let's get at it, get this next item cleaned up. I'm not going to bother videoing it because you know cleaning takes time that being said let's get at it okay so well, as you can see I get the old armature out most nowadays it's something you don't see very many do we got to start with taking the old Bendix here off and how you do that a little clip to hold this in place. Just get a little old deep socket, put it down here, and give it a whack, knock that down, 
then you gotta remove this little clip here. That can be sometimes fun. Nowadays, it's go oh, just place a new, put a new starter in. Yeah, well, this is what separates a mechanic from a parts replacement man. I'm sorry to say, but the reality is, why put a new starter in when the starter once works, still works, and just needs a good lubrication on the bearings and and clean out. the Bendix off. We'll lose our little spacer. We've got to make sure that's there so we know where it goes, when it goes back in. Now we can get our plate off and clean this all up. As well as the Armature. So when I look at this, I see the best way to clean this up is the old wire brush. So we're going to pause it. I'm going to go and clean this, this, and that. And we'll come back and I'll show you how, once I get it all cleaned up, I'll show you how the starter goes back together. Okay, let's see. In repairing the starter, I did a little treating because there's so much rust in here. I cleaned what I could and then I took a little rust paint. Yeah, by Trim Clan. And I painted it up inside give it a little more protection. Now I'm putting back together, these are the field windings. This is here. And uh, this is the terminal for your battery connection. This little piece, try to focus in here, goes in through this rubber and solder here. Well, it unfortunately broke off. I took off of here. This has got to fit in like so, and it connects to that terminal there, which feeds all your windings as the positive. Because that broke off, I tried soldering it back together and soldering isn't quite strong enough. So, I'm going to show you an alternative way of hooking them together so you have a good tight connection. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a little tiny hole here and then we're going to put a screw in that and clamp the two together so we have a good solid contact. Okay, and there we have it. As you can see, got a bolt in there, squeeze the two together, put the rubber in, blew any, any excess shavings out. So the next step is now I'm going to get the wire brush here and clean the excess off of there so we get that good magnetic field to, you know, do this to the old armature. How we achieve this is a little old wire brush into my old drill here and we just run up and down like that. As you can see, now we can obtain a magnetic field that will spin that old armature. 
case you wonder how a starter works, basically your field winding has been in the pretty well the same setup as your armature. You have two north poles, so we're going to call these the north poles, and we're going to call these two the south poles. And that's what works the magnetic fields, so that it spins that armature. So now we're going to work on the brushes and clean them up. We have two positive brushes and two negative brushes. Again, these brushes work as a north and south pole with the armature. So let's get busy at it. What we got to do is clean the ends off here. And if it look for any loose back wires or connections, which we can see it looks pretty good, but we're going to clean these connections up here so we get a better contact. So there we go. We have the brushes clean. Uh, just what you do to clean brushes here. As you can see, I'm trying to get you a good close view here so you can see the shininess. And that's your surface that you want contacting right here. So it's a little bit of a row, how do you explain it, impact. We had one brush here that was a little excess arcing. So it took the old rat tail file. I couldn't show you this because I can't hold the camera and hold this brush and clean it all at the same time. But you give it that little counter shape back like that, as you can see, to that one. So now we have the brushes there. Next thing is to start putting this together. Well, looks like we're at a halt for finishing the starter, so we won't be able to get that back together because what I'm waiting is I have to order new springs to keep these brushes against the armature, so they're on hold there, so we can't put them this back together until I get the new springs. So, I was hoping to have this engine as my final video for this OMC GM engine. So what I'm going to decide to do, we're going to finish this, get it ready to go in the boat as far as I can go. So, I finally managed find the last head bolt. And if, if you watched my video earlier on, you you heard me saying I was missing one of those. Well, I finally found it, so now I can torque this head down. So that's the first thing we're going to do on this here. So we're going to take this carburetor off, I just, like I said before, and just dug everything out here looking. I have to clean up the threads on these bolts for this valve cover, but at least I found them, which is another big step. So we're getting down to the final stages of this engine rebuild. So like I said, we're going to finish it off today as far as I can go until those springs for that starter gets on. That can be put on at any time afterwards. Meantime, we're going to get the few the last of the items that we can get on. We're going to get them on. Okay, now we get the old clicker out, what is known as a torque wrench. 
match. And we're going to do this in two stages. get on my boy's case. I told him when he finished using it, take it off the spring. Obviously he didn't, so. The first stage we want is, I want to set it, we'll go 40 pounds. That's 40 foot pounds. Well, it's getting harder for me to read this scale. Okay, there's the 30. So 10 more will give us 40. And 30. I gotta get my eyes examined. It's, it's getting so hard at seeing. Okay, there's a 40 mark. And we start with the center. Always start with the center. I'm just going to turn the camera off for stage two. Okay, now that that's done, put the old torque winch away. Always, whenever you use one, a click type torque wrench, take the tension off when you're finished. It saves on the spring stretching in it then. And uh, get our little socket here, adapter off. Boy, some of these clips, they sure make them tight. Well, you need a pry bar to get them off.
got a good one to point out to you. What you get with El Cheapo extensions. Broke it getting down to the last bolt. And I got to this one here being the last bolt. My extension snapped. Took another one out of my toolbox, another El Cheapo. Same thing, snap. This shows quality from an El Cheapo to a good quality. Like Snap-on, Craftsman, or a Mac tools. Always remember, you get what you pay for. <coughs> now that that's done, we're going to get the old valve cover on. I didn't show you on camera, but I'll explain what I did when I painted my old cover. I took grease over all the important information, painted it, and I just took over to the old wash barrel and washed the grease off here. So we're now ready to put the gasket on it and put it on. I have the gasket over here. But we're going to put a layer of silicone in here so that when I place the gasket, it holds the gasket in place. So that is the next step here. Okay, where did I put it? Just rest me there for a second. It should be here. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And it's a nice rubber gasket. Good. I'll just go and quickly clean it off. Nice thing about rubber gaskets, you can reuse them over two or three times before you really have to replace them. And they beat cart gaskets all tech. Another tip. If you haven't got a cart gasket or a rubber gasket, you can take your silicone, put a layer here about an eighth of an inch thick, let it cure, and you got your gasket.
<laughs> okay, now we get our gasket. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Hey. Well, I went ahead and put the valve cover on. I forgot to turn the camera on, so. Sorry about that. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna bolt the old carburetor on. This is our pipe for our choker valve, heat unloading valve. Instead of using studs, I'm just going to use bolts. Line that up. Gasket's already on the base of this carburetor and it's in good shape, so don't need to worry about that. got them all started so now we've got my half inch wrench and we'll tighten them down Pick the hardest one first, which is this one here. And I'm going to pause it because it's going, as you can see, it's going to take time getting just that one in. Well, I'm going to pause it at this. Look, my water pump pulley put on. I decided I'm going to swap. Can't find the bolts, so I'm going to swap the studs with the bolts I bolted this down around. Back plate on here. But my back got sore. I sat down to take a quick break after torquing the old head down. And I can't, my back's telling me about that last torque. I do, I do have a pinched sciatic nerve, so it really affected it. So I'm going to shut it down at this there. And, and uh, I do hope you watch, like, and please do subscribe. It would be... Uh, tremendous boost for me. I am retired, as I said previously. So thanks for watching, and hit that subscribe and like button. And we'll see you on the next one.